So you want to know what to do if a mortgage valuation comes back lower than the agreed purchase price of a buy-to-let investment property. If that's the case, then let's go. My name's Dan, welcome to another video. If it's your first time here and you're interested in hearing about all things UK buy-to-let property related, Make sure you start now by subscribing and clicking the bell to ensure that you don't miss a thing. So just before we get started, let's ensure that we're all on the same page with exactly what we mean by a valuation coming back low. Obviously, with every purchase of a property, you will have a buyer and a seller. And in the middle of that, you'll have an agreed purchase price of that property. Now, if the buyer of that property is using a mortgage to help them fund the property, then the mortgage lender will send a valuer over to the property to be able to check it out, its condition, the local area and the current market, and they will be able to produce and provide for the lender a valuation. Now, if that valuation comes back lower than the agreed purchase price of the property, the lender will only lend on the value of the property and no more. And if you did want to find out more about mortgage valuations, make sure you check out this video where I go in depth and give you the nuts and bolts behind all mortgage valuations. To value a property, the valuer will consider the area that the property is in, the current condition of the property, how much properties of a similar spec have sold for in the area recently, and also also the current market conditions. If you wanted more information on how to actually value a property yourself, make sure you check out this video. It's also worth bearing in mind that a lender will only lend on an agreed purchase price even if that purchase price is lower than the current market value of the property. Let's have a look at a quick example so I can be clear on exactly what I mean. If I was to agree a purchase price on a property for £80,000 but I believed the true market value of that property to be £100,000, when the lenders, valuer, would come out to the property and conduct their research into the area, have a look at the property and look at the true market value. Even if that research showed that the property was worth £100,000, they would only send over a value to the lender of the agreed purchase price, which was £80,000. Meaning that no valuer out there is actually going to put a price on a property that is higher than the agreed purchase price of that property. However, even though a valuer won't put a price that is higher than the agreed purchase price of the property, they will put a price that is lower. Now, this is good news if you're new to industry and you don't have a great deal of experience with purchasing buy-to-let properties. Why? Well, because if you've agreed a price that is much higher or even slightly higher than the current true market value of that property, then you're going to know about it. So you can't really overpay for the property. Well, you could do, but at least you will know that you're overpaying for the property because the valuer will have told you exactly what they believe that property is currently worth. What that does mean is that if the valuer does undervalue the property, they will only go back to the lender with the amount that they believe the property is actually worth, meaning that they will only lend on the amount that the valuer states the property is worth, not the amount that you have agreed to purchase the property for. Which then brings us to the topic of this video. What do you actually do if a mortgage valuation comes back lower than the agreed purchase price? Well, in my opinion, you've got four choices. Option number one is that you can actually pay the difference. And what do I mean by that? Let's have a look at an example. So if we're looking to purchase a property and the agreed purchase price is £100,000, you would expect to put down a 25% deposit, so £25,000, and borrow £75,000 or 75% because you'd be using a 75% loan-to-value buy-to-let interest-only mortgage. And the reason why I use that in the example is because it's most common for buy-to-let investors. However, when the mortgage lender's valuer goes around that property, they value the property at £90,000, meaning that they will only lend 75% of £90,000 rather than £100,000. So you would only be able to lend or borrow 67,500 rather than 75,000 pounds. This would then obviously mean that you would have to put in more of a deposit to be able to make up the difference. So rather than putting in 25,000 pound of your own money, you would actually have to put in 32,500 to be able to make up the full amount. Option number two would be actually going back and renegotiating with the seller of that property and trying to drive that price down to come and be aligned with what the valuer states that that property is actually worth. 
If you wanted to find out more about how to best negotiate whilst purchasing a property, make sure you check out this video. Option number three would be to actually contest the valuation. Now, in my opinion, I actually wouldn't waste your time, effort and energy. In my experience so far, mortgage lenders have got plenty of customers out there. They're not interested in taking any risk whatsoever. So to have your value pushed up and go against what a valuer is saying is really, really rare. And actually, I've never actually heard of anybody being able to get that value increased. If you've managed to contest a valuation and got a mortgage lender to agree on a up value of a property, let me know in the comments below because I'd be really interested to hear from you. Option number four is you could simply walk away knowing that actually the value of the property is less than what you would agree to purchase it for. So you're going to go back into the market and find, try and find another property to buy. Have you ever had a valuation come back lower than the agreed purchase price? If you have, let us know in the comments below and how you got around it and what the outcome was. Just before I give you some tips and advice on what I would actually do, if you wanted to pick up a free step-by-step -step guide on how to buy a safe, solid, sound and secure investment property, make sure you go below in the comments and pick up a free copy of my book, How to Buy to Let. That's right, it's completely free. All I ask is for you to pay the postage and the packaging and I'll send you out a copy. In my opinion, I would always go back and renegotiate with the seller. Now, not all valuations will come back 100% accurate. There's always going to be anomalies depending on what day of the week it is and how that valuer is feeling. So it is always a bit of a minefield and there's always question marks being thrown around. However, to get that decision overturned and to have a property upvalued is really, really rare. So I would put the pressure on the seller of the property, provide that information, that valuation that you've been given by the lender and your mortgage advisor and really try to drive that price down so you can get it aligned with what the valuer is saying that property is actually worth. And quite typically when a seller is presented with this information, they will drop the price often thinking or knowing that if another valuer goes round, the chances are that they will probably value the property for the same amount, meaning that anybody who is using a mortgage or leverage to purchase the property is always going to get the same answer. Another option is you could always try your luck with a different lender who would send out a different valuer to the property. However, what you really want to be doing for your best interest is driving that price down so you can get a better deal rather than trying to get more more money to purchase the property for a higher amount. Quite commonly with investors that I work with who are considering going back to the seller of the property, things I hear frequently are, will I upset the seller? Will I upset the agent? Am I pushing my luck? I'm not really experienced in this area, so I don't know what to do. I really want the property, so shall I just pay the difference? I feel bad because I've agreed that purchase price and now I'm going back on my word. I don't know how to negotiate. And my answer to all of these concerns or these questions is always welcome to property investing. Property investing is a people business. So long as you're open, transparent and honest, genuine, and you've got everyone's best interest at heart, a negotiation on a property, even after a valuation has come back, is just typical business. So knuckle down, brush up your negotiation skills and get stuck in. And just before I do give you one more thing that could come back from a mortgage valuation that you might not be aware of, if you've enjoyed anything in this video so far or if it's been useful, please do give me a thumbs up because it just helps others find the video like you have done today. So another thing that could happen when that valuation comes back is that the mortgage lender actually puts a retainer on the mortgage. Now, what does that mean? So a retainer is an amount that is held back by the lender until some work is completed and can be proven to be completed, and then the lender will release those funds. Let me give you an example. If when the valuer goes around the property, they report that there's some damp within the property, they'd report it back to the lender, and then the lender could put a retainer on the loan and say that we're going to hold back £5,000 until you can send us over a damp report proving that you've actually had that work carried out on the property and the property is now in a good, safe, stable condition. 
Once that paperwork is produced, you just send it over to the mortgage lender and then they will release the amount that they've actually retained or held back. And I've actually got an example myself of this where I was purchasing a property, the valuer noticed some damp in the property and reported it to the lender. The lender put a £5,000 retainer on the mortgage, which then gave me a few options. What I actually did was go back to the seller of the property and ask them to carry out a damp survey on the property, which then produced a report telling me that the damp work was going to cost £4,000. So I said to the seller of that property, I'm still willing to buy the property if they complete the work and get me the certificate so I can then pass it over to the lender who will then lend me and loan on the full amount. Alternatively, if they didn't want to complete that work and they wanted me to do it, we would need to reduce the purchase price of that property by the amount that it would cost me to get that work done, so the £4,000, but also I wanted an extra £2,000 because now it's going to cost me time, effort and energy. Obviously, I wouldn't be able to put a tenant in it straight away and I've got to do the organising and get some damp experts in there to be able to sort the work for me. The seller of the property actually agreed to drop the price by the cost of the work, so the £4,000 and £2,000 for me to take on the project as well. So I got the property knocked down by an extra £6,000. I then had the work completed on the property, produced the certificate over to the lender, and then they released the extra £5,000, which gave me the full amount on the £100,000. In this example, you will find nine times out of 10, the seller will actually drop the price because they can't be bothered or they really don't want to organize or take on the work within that property. So it's a really good bargaining chip to ensure that the property that you're purchasing has the required work done on it before you buy it or when you buy it, and the lender will actually still lend you the full amount. What you wouldn't want is the valuer to actually miss that damp. You then purchase the property and then have to pay to have it rectified once you've purchased it. If you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.